Howdy, I'm Rachel, teacher, healer, and um, sick. Um, thank you. Um, I had to reschedule for yesterday, so thank you for you guys being flexible about rescheduling um, myself for today. Um, obviously, the what I want to talk about today um, was some stuff that's come up over the last couple of weeks. Um, and it's a reoccurring thing that seems to come up quite a bit. So I really wanted um, us to kind of go through like, some of the basic stuff that I don't think a lot of um, people talk about um, around intention setting. So what I'm going to do is just going to define intention setting because that could be a lot of stuff. Um, define when it kind of will look at when it might go wrong or doesn't work out or it actually has the opposite effect. Um, of what we want it to do. Um, and it's really, really important with intention setting that you do something personal. You don't literally copy and paste other people's ways of doing things. Use it for inspiration, use it as sort of like a formula to work out what to do for yourself. But um, it's really important that we kind of look at things for ourselves and how they apply to us directly. Because um, somebody else's intention is absolutely not going to reflect your intention in the slightest. That's like, like a, a basic way of the world. So, um, please say hi if you've popped on. I do like to see and be nosy and see who it is and connect because um, that's how my energy works best is just is via those connections. Um, so intention setting. And um, let me know um, what sort of intention setting you guys do out of all of this. Um, it's really interesting to see if there might be something else that you would add into this list. Hi, Emma. Um, is that intention setting is around... Um, anything from writing out an affirmation that you want to use. Intention setting could be um, even a prayer, saying a prayer. It could be direct spell work. It could be, hi, Vicky. Um, it could be um, doing some healing work around a certain area that um, you want to heal, you want to understand a bit more. Quite often when we um, Google what other people are doing, we find out what they're doing and it's interesting and you know it's it makes a lot of sense um but sometimes people are too kind of in my own personal experience people are too formulaic and too um this will work for you this worked for me and this will work for you and it's it's not the way it works everybody's energy is individual everybody's situation is completely different there might be subtle you know things where we go oh they're kind of going through the same thing as me and they're going through the same thing as me and it's something that I find that when I work with clients, it's really important that I remember that even if it's something that I've been through, that the client that I'm sat with might not want the same outcome as me, or there's going to be other subtle bits and pieces that are not going to reflect what's going on, or what has happened to me, or maybe what's happened to a couple of clients that I've worked with who might be on the same vein because it's the way the universe works. It kind of, every, everyone goes through the fun, same shit together at the same time. So the when it comes to intention setting, it's... A, really important that you look for yourself. Do your research, understand things, but never, ever copy what other people do. Because you yourself will sway whether or not the intention works massively, like massively. Your own um, understanding of self, your own understanding of a lot of things will massively sway whether or not what you're going to do is going to actually work for you. So... Um, a lot of people might do some intention setting. It might be candle magic. You might do, you know, whatever. Um, and you know, you might write down an affirmation of, of what you want to happen, or you might write out how much money you want to earn, or you might write out, um, you know, a whole host of other things about how you want a particular project to work out. Okay. What you've also got to understand is that underlying that are the other things within your personality which are currently making that not happen. So what you're asking the universe to do is to go from um, you having um, bits and pieces that have gone on for you, which means that you've got some be certain belief systems and certain things going on for yourself, which means that that positive thing that you want can't possibly come true, that you're sat there with still this belief system within you. OK, so the first thing you kind of want to do is to look at yourself and understand yourself. Know, know yourself. Know, or, you know, we, you know. It's sometimes very easy to look at things positively and not to go, actually, 
I want this, but I haven't dealt with, with something else. So a really common one that comes up around business is around collaboration. So um, when we feel lack around money coming in, or around business coming in, or around being seen, or whatever it is we're getting from our business. Because our business could be, you know, just as much linked to our ego, um, and that's not a negative thing necessarily, as it is linked to abundance and, and monetary wealth and things like that. Um, when we feel a lack around that, and we start kind of grabbing things in, um, and we might set an intention that my business is really successful. My business is this, that, and the other. My business does this for me. My business um, is amazing. If we've also got issues around lack and around um, competition in any way, which might be um, we read somebody else's thread and go, oh, my God, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, and it might disempower you in some way. We might think, oh, God, they phrased it so much better than me. Or, oh God, why are they doing the same thing as me? You know, whatever little tiny, tiny, it might even be a tiny, tiny little thing. There's something within you which has still got that lack, which has still got that competition. So if you then set intentions um, for um, your business to do well or whatever it is off the back of that, it's going to work in one of two ways. Either it's going to work and you're going to put so much effort and energy into this spell work or into this intention setting or crystal grid or what, however you set your intention you're going to put so much energy so much focus you're going to focus on that thing every single day so that it comes to fruition you're going to do that at the expense of others so um you know some people have just got really big personalities and they can just throw so much energy at something that it's just going to make something happen um because of their sheer will and um, we do that at the expense sometimes of other people so if you've got if if you see that there's lack and you see that there's not enough what we often do is end up taking threads of other people's business or threads of other people's work or energetic in some way and suppressing them in some way that can happen okay so what quite often what i find is that people have set intentions or done spell work which is supposed to be positive for them and actually it's impacted on me because they might know me personally or they might have even read um, a thread or something where they've kind of gone oh god you know she disempowers me in some way and it's impacted on me personally i've, I've i haven't thrown shit back but i've had to kind of take all that stuff apart and then do some work on myself because on some level i've invited that in okay um, the other thing to understand is that it might not work, that that positive intention setting might not work. So it may be that um, you've set an intention, it might be um, not particularly strong, or it might, might be like, you know, oh, I'll, just, I'll just have a go at it. And don't get me wrong, sometimes I get myself into those situations, I think, I'm just going to light the candle and do the thing because I'm in such a funky place at the moment that I can't quite think my, my way out of it. Um, and so you set that intention and the intention isn't strong enough. And because of your own stuff, because of the other stuff that's behind it, it all falls apart and it doesn't actually work and it doesn't work out. So when we come to looking at our own stuff, there's kind of like two questions we want to ask. One is, um, one is for your own stuff, um, how is this current situation serving me? And that's a really difficult conversation to have with yourself what am i gaining um some of us might gain from a sense of being a hero um and um being like totally independent or um that which is which is a trait of mine um you know you know saving the day and not asking for help and like internalizing everything like you know that, that that's the ego not wanting help from outside um the other thing that you could do is fall into the victim space where you end up thinking what serves me is attention and those sort of trends are set when you're a child so you know how independent a child were you how much attention was given to you when you did positive stuff how much attention to you was given to you when you were ill or did negative stuff or you know so sometimes when we fall into those victim modes it's because we're used to the only way we receive attention maybe as children or one of the main ways we received attention as children was through negative negative things happening to us and people feeling sorry for us so those are two sort of ways to look at how we're scuppering ourselves and how it's benefiting us at the moment to sit in the funk that we're sat in um, I have seen a question I'm going to come up to it in a second I want to get this thought out of my head if that makes sense um, and the other thing is then to look at um, how do I feel about this at the moment how do I currently feel about my business situation how do I currently feel about 
I mean, obviously, this, this is what I've used because it's a really common thing that comes up. But it could be, how do I feel about inviting relationships or friendships into my life? How does it actually feel to me? Does it feel scary? Do I distrust people? And picking that apart, picking apart how I actually are situation at the moment. Okay. So when it comes to you setting the intention, what you're then doing is saying, I'm going to set the intention for this, but I want it to feel like this, 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 and this. I want to invite um, um, friends into my life. I want to invite um, money into my life. I want to invite whatever it is in my life, and it's got to feel like this. It's got to the money has to feel collaborative and upbeat, and um, like I'm lifting myself and everyone else up. And um, I want it to feel easy and positive and um, joyful. I want it to feel like all of those things. That's how I want it to feel. And the friendship thing could be, um, I want other friends who um, like have got the same outlook on me on life. And um, I want it to, like at the moment, I feel really distrustful about people. So I want it to be people that I really feel like I can trust. Like it's really obvious that I can trust them. Um, and people who aren't going to, you know, people who aren't going to um, screw me over and, and all of that, you know, all of that stuff. The other thing that with trust is, you know, when we look at a second layer is that, um, and this goes for a lot of stuff, is that we'll look, our brain continually looks to reinforce lessons that we've already learned. So our brain will go, okay, you don't trust friends. So my friends are on you. So um, it looks for examples of when they've done that and you pick those out and highlight those over anything positive anyone's done or it might be um stuff about yourself where um somebody will give you some really amazing feedback and i'll say one thing which is a constructive criticism you know crit constructive criticism is perfectly okay we're all adults we can deal with constructive criticism and the one we focus on is that one negative thing oh my god you know and they've given us all this wonderful feedback and the one thing which they focus on is that is that negative thing and all the thing we felt that we can improve on. So we then take away from our own achievement. So how we can invite achievement into our life. And if that's part of what you want from your business is a sense of achievement, you can see how that would kind of like filter through. So the ways to get around that are to, to heal the issue, the underlying issue that you've got, um, and to secondarily um, set make the intention really, really clear, which is why you can't take anybody else's wording on stuff. So you might say, um, I want this, you know, and you might write out a general phrase in the middle and this feels good, this is what I want to invite into my life, but I need it to feel like this. I need to feel happy, joyful, you know, whatever it is, and putting those as extra things to support and underpin what it is that you're trying to do. Because what you can take, like I said, what you can do is twofold, is either it's not going to happen or it's going to take away from um, somebody else because of a sense of lack. Um, and if you set intentions that it's got to feel joyful and da 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 da, you've then you're gonna then have to focus your mind on joy, focus your mind on that stuff, and do some practical work around inviting that stuff in. And a gratitude style diary works really well for that. So um, spotting, you know, the where you know you've been able to trust your friends, or where you know somebody's come through for you, or when actually reaching out for help for independent has has paid off. Those types of gratitude diaries work really well for spotting that and underpinning that. So, you know, when we Google stuff online and we find somebody else's way of doing it, it might have worked really well for them. But the really important thing to understand is it's not going to work well for you unless you understand your foundational stuff that's underneath it, which isn't underpinning. You know, they're they're going to have different foundational stuff that isn't underpinning there you know, or is underpinning it in the right way or not underpinning it in the right way. Um, what if everyone else is winning against your intention, i.e. well-meaning but not wanted? Um, uh, what if everyone else is willing against your intention? Um, what, like, so that scenario which I've said, which it might be um, people, it doesn't serve people for something to work out for you. Um, and they, they're not necessarily, they think they're maybe helping um, by telling you that that's not going to work out or you know, all of that stuff. It, um, it, a lot of it depends on how close that person is to you personally. The closer they are emotionally and personally, the more power they're going to have over your personality. That's the way it works, particularly when it comes to sort of parent-child dynamics or parent-teacher dynamics or when you've got that sort of older um person, younger person mentality that works. It might be an older brother or sister. It might be a younger brother 
brother or sister who's got quite a big personality as well that emotional tie is is one of the biggest issues um and the, the issue there is to do some proper deep work around the issues that are shown in that relationship not just that relationship but the issues that come around that relationship and how they unfold across your life because that's going to sort of be what underpins it why are you allowing them to have more power over this situation because on some in some scenario on some level that's what we're allowing them to do and that's not me um knowing me like I'm, I'm, it's not me saying that people aren't sometimes victims and aren't often victims and aren't often um having shit thrown at them that's not to take away from that at all it's to go on some level this there, there's been a whole series of actions which has allowed this to happen in my life how do I move away from that and how do I stop that from happening again but in a really positive way not in a I'm going to close everything down and shut it off so um what I would do around that is to set some intention around what you want to set your intention clear Emma and say um and I need to feel like um like like you're reclaiming your power um this is you know this is my project this nobody else's project has you know and nobody else has um got any influence over this this is something I'm doing for me no matter what anybody else thinks this is the right thing for me or um you know the, however you want it to feel which is going to overcome this power dynamic um you know sometimes you know in a, with a sort of when you feel dominated by someone you're saying and I reclaim my power through this this is how I go about reclaiming my power um you know because it's all right us saying that nobody's um, opinion means nothing to us um, because on some level it, it normally does and it's working out why that that person's opinion that person's influence is so important if it's somebody who isn't directly in your life and isn't very close to you and you've still got that power dynamic thing going on then you need to kind of understand um why um what's going on with them what else have they thrown in on it you know there's normally a bit of a vengeance or a bit of a nasty edge to that person if they're not that close to you um it's normally well-meaning people who are close to you who end up putting a scupper in the works um because on some level it isn't going to serve them and you don't want it at all um you know even in you think about in a relationship if you're working a lot of hours your other half might be thinking oh i wish i could spend more time with them and they might only say the odd thing, but it's enough to kind of un un undermine what's going on with you and you're feeling bad about that. So, um, you know, in those situations, you need to have like a direct conversation and say, you've said this on a couple of occasions and it's made me feel like this. Um, can you explain a little bit further as to what you mean or why, you you know, what else is going on for that? And try to come to, it might be a compromise. It might be, okay, I, I need to give this three to six months. I need to give it a year. I need to do whatever I need need to do for the next few months and be in this situation and I need to feel like you're supporting me wholeheartedly um because of this you know even even though this is going on like you know that's what I need from you um and to sort of make those compromises within the relationship it might even be if you're a parent who makes the odd comment to say that did you know that I don't know if you, you're meaning to but um that's quite hurtful or um that really undermines my confidence um and I'm really happy to have like an, a, a conversation about your feelings around that and why you think it's not important or it is important or, or you know whatever and what might come from that conversation might be that you listen to them or they listen to you and they understand where you're coming from it might be that you listen to them and go oh god yeah i hadn't thought about that and that's really interesting um if you can open up a conversation around that then it's really really important when it comes to relationships influencing what's going on with us um and if you can't, it's going to take you longer to work through that stuff because then it's down to you to work on it for yourself rather than working on it as part of a collaborative. Or it might be that you have that conversation and they're still belligerent and making comments and all the rest of it as they were before. Um, and then you know that you probably need to do some value building and self empowerment and all of that type of stuff, which is going to be totally self work again. So, you know, people will say to you, do this intention, set that intention, set the other. But what's really, really important is that you understand how that impacts on you and why it is it's currently not in your life. That's the key. Why is this currently not in my life? Why am I having to ask for it? Because that's the underlying work that needs to be done. Um, and it will be it will be a thing that you're probably working through. I mean, so I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to expect in the next three months. Um, it might be that I need to think about doing this over a year 
So, you know, we can't expect to ask for a change emotionally or to ask for a real world change and for it to appear straight away. It might take us some time to kind of work through what it is that we need to do to get there. So being committed to it long term is a is a really important thing. And knowing that you can't set a goal which is going to pay out tomorrow, or pay out next week, or pay out in two months. You know, I'm 42. If I've been doing something for 42 years, that me expecting it to work tomorrow isn't going to happen. And if it does, I'll probably have a mental breakdown because I'll be putting so much crazy pressure on myself and expecting too many changes and other areas of my life are going to fall apart, which is a really important part of intention setting. And any sort of goal setting is how long do I want this to happen over um, and how much wiggle, wiggle room do I have? Um, they're very nice and meaning, but feels that their intentions are masking mine. Yeah, um, that their intentions are positive but it's not exactly the same reflection as yours. And it's then sort of widging in two ways, like batting up against each other in two ways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it might be an idea, Em, it might be an idea. Um, hey, Sarah, um, yeah, to have that conversation with another. Um, so when it comes to your intention setting, what you set your intentions on and, and, and all the rest of it, you know, is up to you. Make sure that you kind of, it's more than just a sentence. Make sure that it's a feeling behind it. Um, if you're doing candle magic, you're putting the energy into the candles. If you're doing prayers, you're putting the energy into your prayers. If you're um, doing crystals, you're putting the energy into the, the crystal grid as you set it up. You know, you're feeling it. I want this to, like, like you know, I want this to feel like it's self-empowered. I want this to feel like I'm being seen as an adult in this situation. You know, all of that stuff that you want to you wanna put in, you're putting it into your crystals or your um, candles or you know whatever else it is that you're using to, to help you set your intentions even just your positive affirmation holding the card writing out the extra words that go around it holding the card putting it somewhere like on your mirror on your card dashboard somewhere like that, that you can see it on a regular basis is really really important okay so I'm kind of done here if there's um if anyone's watching on catch up or is going to catch up um any questions that you pop on here um I will catch up with afterwards. Um, and that goes for, I'll upload this onto Instagram and onto my YouTube channel as well. So um, <laughs> that's no problem, I'm get back to work. Um, so it's, yeah, just um, let me know if you've got any questions and I'll catch up with them when I can on whichever channel it is, I will catch up with them. Um, if you've got any specific questions. Um, next week, my Friday freebie is gonna be either healing or channeled I can't remember I think it's channeled next week um, I do some channeled work um, with some cool messages coming through some divine channeled work um, workshops I've got coming up are all booked up at the moment which are my Reiki workshops I'll probably be announcing some more in after Christmas I might announce them before before after Christmas but there is um, yeah think people still aren't booking stuff in the same way and all the rest of it so if it's a face-to-face -face workshop that you want to do with me make sure you book it up quickly because you know i've had people trying to book on the day before and i need to prep and i need to prep it's not going to happen um if it's an online workshop then you've probably got a couple of days beforehand for me to get all the you know your workbooks and things like that over to you so um i'm still playing it a little bit with workshops etc right hey um so hey nishka so i uh, will catch up with you guys later um and um yeah let me know if you're catching up on replay Bye. bye